Thank you for lunch, Celez. No worries. Where is Celez Patson? Don't ask me, Barry. I just work here. I would have thought you knew all about his after-hours activities. Wouldn't you like to know? Look, I've been up all night writing his bloody speech. He has to deliver it to the world in three and a half minutes. That old bastard doesn't front Australia's international credibility. He'll be down the girdler. Oh, Your Excellency. Thank goodness. Give yes, me speech, Bassett. Give yes, me speech. Bless you. Oh, I reckon I have to study this one sitting down. He's already as drunk as a skunk. Well, we've, we've got two minutes to sober him up. What do you got? Some food? Something solid? Uh, yeah. Please, we are very, very, very late, sir. Uh, we do have to no go. No worries. It's very important, No sir. worries. Look at this high fibre in this. What's your speech about, anyway, pal? Just to try and play it as, as suave and urbane as possible, Celeste. No uh, worries. There are still quite a few people who don't know where Australia is. Yes, get <laughs> Our Rose Maria, I love you. Hello, everybody. <laughs> G'day. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen of the Assembly, uh, good morning to you. Good there. afternoon, depending on what part of the world you come from. And boy, it's like stepping into the pages of the National Geographic magazine being here today. It's beautiful. <laughs> Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Les Patterson. Sir Leslie Colin Patterson, at your service. And I have the honour to be, the, I have the honour to be uh, the Australian ambassador to this wonderful, wonderful organisation. And I, I've had a drink, ladies and gentlemen. I wouldn't be so foolish and hypocritical to suggest to you that I hadn't imbibed. Because I have. I've had a couple of drinks, as a matter of fact, but I've still got control of my faculties. They were still there when I looked at them last, anyway. But my country of Australia, I tell you I was an Australian, Australia's come a long way since my country was just a dumping ground for English convicts way back in the Middle Ages. A long, long way. We're the centre of refinement these days. Culture. We've got more culture than a penicillin factory, ladies and gentlemen. Got a mental picture of that? If you don't believe me, just think of our beautiful table wines, yachtsmen, operas, films, crocodiles, macrame, cheese. Look, I'm chairman of the, I'm chairman of the Australian Cheese Board, as a matter of fact, ladies and gentlemen. Funnily enough, I was sitting on the cheese board earlier today, and that can be uncomfortable. Those little flags get up here. Hey, what have you done? My career. You fed me the beans, pal. Now we cross to our news desk for a special bulletin on the Patterson crisis. It has now been confirmed that the victim of yesterday's incident at the UN involving senior Australian diplomat Sir Les Patterson was Sheikh Mustafa Tool, president of the tiny but powerful Gulf state of Abu Nivia. A 10 billion petrodollar loan to Australia is now in jeopardy. Here is an action replay. Those little flags get up here. Sir Les has already been recalled pending an inquiry on the highest level. That's your father they're talking about? 
How many times have I told him never do it outside the house? The shame, the shame. and put on a can of beans, all right? Oh, no, you won't, Craig. He'll blow us all sky high. I've got the media up my freckle. Gwen, please, Gwen, please. Listen, I've got half a bottle of a duty-free old spice, Gwen. Half a bottle of old spice. Gwen, let me in. Come on, piss off, you bastard. Just this once, you smooth-talking devil. Gwen, there'll be a statement later. I will be making a statement later. James Scanlon, Channel 8, what would you say you've done for Australia's international credibility? I reckon I'm blinded. <laughs> Have a mineral water, Prime Minister. Ah, uh, mineral water be buggered. I haven't touched a grog since I was elected. You know, that bloody dickhead Patterson is coming very close to getting me back on the sauce again. Patterson's an old mate of yours, isn't he? Uh, mate, I wouldn't give him the wind of my ass to cool his bloody suit. I thought... That... I wouldn't piss in his ear if his brain was on fire. Good day, Bob. Yeah. Yeah. My deep shit. Mm -hmm. I think you'll need a snorkel. Sit down. Liz, when I gave you that big New York posting, I put my ass right on the line. And now they're screaming for my resignation. Gee, Bob, I only farted, pal. Look, you can sit there with your silly quizzical face. I have been involved in some pretty delicate fiscal negotiations with Abu Nivia. Ten billion flaming dollars. And it was in the check and the bloody mail stage, too. Les, you have one day to clean out your desk. I certainly wouldn't want to be in your shoes. Well, they don't suit everybody. They're out of date, Les. Like you, mate. Yes. It's President Rivers on the hotline, Prime Minister. Yeah, yeah Bob here. Prime Minister, can we talk? Because of that... In continent goofball of yours, Abu Nivea is on the brink of revolution and the Soviets are winning the toss. I have fired him, Madam President. He is history. His career is over. Don't fire him, asshole. Promote him. He's our only hope. Uh, I don't get it. Mustafa Fatul said he would let the desert sands blow over this incident on the condition you deliver him a nice, fat, Aussie diplomat, Patterson, on the very next plane. The bailman of the bastard. Cut the sentimental crap, Bob. But do it, or those Nivians will be shopping for their defense hardware in Moscow. Les, got some good news for you, you incorrigible old bastard. You're our new man in the Middle East. How about that? Gee, thanks, Bob. I knew it'd all blow over. I reckon we need a hot shot in that part of the world, eh, fella? Who is manning the Nivian embassy, fellas? Uh, we've got a young bloke running a one-man show out there, uh, Nibble Thong. Telex Thong? No, Nibble Thong. Small for Sir Les. PM's telex says extra large. I hate shopping for someone else. Excuse me, is this lining allergy tested? Must boy. I is it is it a natural fiber? Must boy. What about Mas this boy. one with the red satin lining? Now, Lady Patterson would like that. Sexy. Come on, Mr. Thong. This will be second hand in an hour. Your ambassador's flight is on schedule. Isn't this a bit rough? I mean, couldn't you just give him a wrap across the knuckles? Oh, we will do that as well. Our leader has every variation in the book planned. Just 
want him in there, I'll keep him till later. I gave at the office. Thank you for flying NIF Air. We'll be arriving at Nivea International Airport in five minutes. Oh boy! They'd have to have a big welcome lined up for me. Patterson has arrived. Perfect timing, don't you think, Inspector? How is he in there? He? He's thinking of ingenious ways to torture our imminent guest. This desert has swallowed many unpleasant little secrets. Exalted one, our doomed diplomat has arrived. What is it to be? We have several entertaining options. Scorpions on the testicles. Or perhaps dung beetles. I want this infidel to suffer very slowly. <laughs> nice of you to pick me up. Devil, isn't it? G'day, Nev. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to meeting this Mr. Tool face to face. He seems a decent sort of a bloke. Underneath, humane, understanding, not a vindictive bone in his body, neither. <laughs> what a magnanimous leader. Our Prime Minister reckons this affair has been blown all out of proportion. Sooner I can shake this tool by the hand, sooner I can put it all behind me. I think that's everyone's intention, Sir Les. Put me left. <laughs> you know, I reckon this posting in Abu Naivaya is going to be the highlight of my diplomatic career. Abu Nivea, Sir Leslie. Your presence gives me great pleasure. <laughs> I'd like to take this opportunity to apologize, Master, but let's sit down and have a bit of dessert. You dog. will die! You cowardly infidel! How would you like to choose your own torture? Death by a thousand saber cuts. Exquisite! Crucifixion. Or perhaps you would prefer something a little more interesting for us. <laughs> Prepare the camel's medication! Well, I'll be off now, I reckon. Take him! <laughs> yeah. Hey, you bastard! Go easy, you dickhead! I'm an Australian diplomat! I got immunity. I'm the new ambassador, for Christ's sake. Uh, have you a last wish? Too right, I have. May your balls turn to bicycle wheels and backpedal up your ass. Get out of it, you mongrel dog, you piss ass. Take your hands off me, you wobby bug. Dear Lady Patterson, I didn't know your husband long. Less than five minutes, as a matter of fact. But his courage was legendary.
I haven't stirred things up. Core violence! Sometimes it is necessary, my friend. My name is Colonel Richard Gadani. There's Patterson. I know. I've been planning this coup for years. Ever since I was made Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces. But it took your courageous and imaginative gesture in the UN to make this country's reins come firmly in my hands. I salute you. I, uh, I think I better tell you, Dick, uh, I'm a happily married man, old son. <laughs> but where's that old bastard in the beard and the bathrobe? Mustafa Tull. And then we'll take care of him, come. Les, you and your embassy staff are their first diplomatic mission to recognize my new revolutionary government. Be careful. Oh, by the way, the petrodollar loan to Australia is still on. Fantastic. Yeah. Now you tell me whether you want a check or okay. cash. Quicker the diddle Bono! Sir! Take the ambassador to his embassy. Sir! Ah. Hey, Nev, where were you in the shit at the fan, dickhead? Celebration drink now. I'm as dry as a camel's cookie. Water! Have you got something stronger than this? How about a double scotch? Stop at the nearest pub, will you, mate? Sir Leslie, alcohol is strictly forbidden in our country. One drink, and we hang you by your balls. He got off lightly. Who are you, mate? Jeremy Williams! former chamber music critic on the Sunday Times and head of the British Council in Abu Devere. At your service, sir. Poor old bugger, what did you do? They caught me with one pink gin. This isn't the place for a man who enjoys a glass, sir. Oh, I knew there'd have to be a catch to this job. Pretty quick, Nev. You missed all the action. Allow me, sir. Oh, no, no, no. Official papers, top secret. I never let them out of my hand. Oh, no, 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 please. You are a guest in our country. <laughs> no, very nice of you, sport, but I smash it. There goes me duty free. Aftershave. <laughs> Paco Raban, all spice, brute. Au sauvage. You sweat a bit in my job. bit of ethnic architecture. Yes, it uh, used to be a mosque. I come with it. Oh, no, that's a Hassan family. They want to migrate to Australia. <laughs> They'd be pushing their luck. Truth, Nev. Who's the hornbag? She's flashing me the old vertical smile. This? Is your personal secretary, Nancy Benkowitz, Sir Les. Very glad to know you. It's a pleasure to meet you, Sir Les. I hope you don't mind working for a male chauvinist, Nance. I'm the bloke who put the dick back into dictation. My shorthand isn't my strong point. <laughs> Nothing wrong with a bit of longhand after hours, eh? And what's a spunky little Sheila like you doing in a dump like this? I was an airline stewardess. I came here for the water skiing, but frankly, it's the pits. Which is a problem, because a physical person like me needs to be kept busy. 
So, uh, how's Lady Gwen? Who? Your wife? Oh, the Lady Patterson. <laughs> well, it's, it's funny you should have asked, uh, Neville. You bastard. She hasn't been at all well, up and down like a bride's night, as a matter of fact. Can I do anything for you, sir? Well, you can, but uh, for the moment, uh, how about taking down the telex? <laughs> this is to the Prime Minister of Australia. Dear Bob, having a wonderful time in Abu Nubia? The uh, tea towel heads reckon that the sun shines out of my freckle. Thanks to me, petrodollar loan is back in pipeline. Expect 10 billion bucks in the next diplomatic pouch. <laughs> well done, sir. Which reminds me, I think I'll go for a bit of a stroll around the block just there and back to see how far it is. Check out the local flora and fauna. <laughs> well, you be careful, Sir Les. No worries. Save yourself for me, Nancy. Oh, no problem, Sir Les, no problem. Boxes, boxes, boxes. Australian dollars. You got Mexican? What do you do for a cross, mate? I'm a doctor. Whatever you do in this filthy country, don't touch the water, or you'll get a visit from me. That's 100 American dollars. Visiting careless tourists in their rooms at the Hotel Sodom is my bread and butter, but the jam on top is chronic diarrhea. Les Patterson's my name, by the way. I'm the new Australian ambassador around here. Sir Leslie Patterson, the great negotiator, the Henry Kissinger of Australia. It's an honor to meet you, Herpes. Dr. Charles Herpes. Herpes. Name rings a bell. Many years ago, I discovered horrible skin disease. They named it after me. And for a while, my name was on everybody's lips. But people forget. If only I'd found a cure for this thing, I would be a rich man now. Have a drink on the Australian taxpayer. Oh, you're very kind. What does this dump produce anyway, Charles, apart from oil? Sand and a few dates. And uh, just between ourselves, the most horrible kind of virus you ever see. When I first came to this stinking hole, I was called out to a herdsman's hut in the desert. And there I saw a disease which would make your blood run cold. It was horrible. I called it HELP. H-E-L-P. Herpetic encephalitis of the lymphatic polyp. HELP. Is also the word people tend to scream when they know they've got it. never seen anything like it before. This Nivian strain is unique in the world. Sacre bleu! Did you patch him up, Doc? Yes, I did. After years of research, I developed a miraculous cure. Mm. Um. Ah. Ah. <laughs> ah, hey. Allah. Ah. But no one was interested. Uh, I would have been if I'd got it. 
My work on help has been rejected by every scientific journal in the world. Even the Moscow Free Scientist sent me a rejection slip. Cheer up, Charlie. You never know. Help could take off, become more popular. All you need is a healthy epidemic. You could become the new Louis Pasteur. You could make a bomb out of this with the right manager. <laughs> you could make a squillion. What a novel idea. You know, um... You know any Sheilas around here? Sheilas? Clean Sheilas. You know. Chicks, birds, bits of fluff, goers, hornbags, ceiling inspectors, research assistants. Ah, oh, <laughs> research assistants. Well, as a matter of fact, certainly help themselves. But, uh, it seems that someone is finally becoming interested in my work. Oh, they must have been pretty thirsty to raid a bloke's fridge in the middle of the night. That must have been mighty desperate. Rotten table manners too, eh, hey, Doc? We made a close call, my friend. Here, have a drink. You could probably use a stiff one. I reckon I got one already. Here's the Sheila, Doc. I'd say she's trying to tell us something. Oh! Mon Dieu. This Leslie is Veronique, my research assistant. Water? Ice? Hey, Doc, don't you think we should help Veronique slip into something more comfortable? Good thinking, Leslie. You be the voice scout. We'll have you out of that in no time, Veronique. Oh, you can hardly breathe. Let's get a bit of air to you. Hey, <laughs> you're cold. You come up in goose pups there. It's a long time since I've done this. <laughs> no worries. Oh, thank you. But you did that very badly. Let's try it again. <laughs> hey, 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 go easy. Did you, Sarah? I got a notch off, but that was the end of the story. Thank you. Who's the pin-up? <laughs> She's got a head and a like a half-sucked mango. Last time I saw a head like that, it had a hook in it. That is my sister, Desiree. She's beautiful. She is a singer in New York, in a seafood restaurant. Oh, seafood, eh? Alors, qu'est-ce qu'ils ont chippé? C'est le monsieur qui nous restait, son compte ampoule de la culturelle. Ils ont loupé l'antidote, hein? Oui. Ah, il leur faudra 20 ans et un tas de bonnes chances pour Bien en produire. Oh, qui c'est ce grand champ avec une chaussure, les dents et un grand coq? C'est l'ambassadeur australien. C'est vrai? Sois gentil avec lui, Véronique. Hein? 
Gentil, à quel point Un petit peu... Très gentil. À bientôt. I'll see you later, Leslie. Oh, yeah. Good night. How do you like me so far? How was that, darling? Short and sweet? That was the first for me, Les. I've never done it with a repulsive man before. <coughs> what are you doing here? I don't know. Found it out there in the dark in Charlie's laboratory. Must be some fancy frog liqueur. That's not a frog, it's a toad. One of Charles' specimens pickled in pure alcohol. That will knock you out cold. You want a bet? <laughs> Listen. You are about to have the time of your life. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> you know, whenever I'm in the sack with a beautiful young woman for the first time, I'm inclined to get a little bit overexcited. Oh. So I always keep a special little something standing by on the bedside table. Oh, what is it? Snap of the wife. Nothing like it to slow a man down. I can understand that. <laughs> Come in here, please. I hope this is important. It's a long time since I've had a quiet evening at home with my family. Sit down. Would you spit it out, man? I think I've had a visit from the KGB. There's something missing from my fridge. The antidote? No, 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 no. Just a few ampules of the health virus. Bring the antidote to me. The laboratory is no longer safe. Those crates will be worth billions in a few weeks' time. It won't take long for the Russians to appreciate the true value of what they've stolen. <laughs> Good night, Herpes. We have been looking for a biological weapon as virulent as this for the last quarter of a century. This, comrade, is a kind of present I would like to give to the West. An untraceable weapon they will simply mistake for one of their own rotten social diseases. Nothing must stop us now. Comrade Major, the foreign body which we extract from the late Agent Vladimir's rectum was most interesting. His latest fashion in West. First but useful Gulf State puppet. And now, one of my best agents. This partisan has put his foot in it once too often. Our friend, the Australian, must be given no further opportunity to screw things up. I want the Frenchman's cure. I am determined to catch herpes. progressing strategies. I gotta take the weight off my feet, Chuck. If some of those mothers in the Senate only knew it, I'd do some of my best work in here, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Did you catch the Carson show last night? No. I kid you not, my wife Gypsy nearly wet herself when that line <laughs> dwarf, what's his name, said... Ah! What? Right. you feel you okay, Dwight? God! When did you have your last checkup? Mr. Tone, Mr. Tone, Mr. Tone, are you aware, Mr. Tone, that there is a death 
penalty for drug smuggling in this country. There's been a terrible mistake, Inspector. Mistake? You call this a mistake? It's only Valium. It's drugs. Valium is not a drug, it's a food in tablet form. These women are innocent, Inspector. They're a pacifist group of Australian housewives, the possums for peace on a world tour. They're guests of the Ministry of Culture. Take your hands off me, you third world perverts! Oh, you've got a mock to learn about personal hygiene, you hey, boys. Ned, I'm sorry, what seems to be the problem? Are you our ambassador? No, his assistant. Don't you remember me? I'm Neville Thong from Wollongong. Sybil Thong's boy. Yes, as a matter of fact. Oh, she had such high hopes for you. A spokesperson for this delegation, I would like to protest about the way we have been bullied ever since we entered this godforsaken country of yours. <laughs> We're supposed to be guests here and this is how you treat us. We've been here for hours, haven't we, girls, and treated like terrorists. My poor little friend and former bridesmaid, Madge Allsop, has experienced the most exhausting body search since her honeymoon. You've been subjected to some horrible indignities, haven't you, Madge? So is Colin. Colin? Colin is our little koala bear. He was to be a gift to your new leader, Colonel Godowney, but after this morning's nightmare, I'm inclined to think we'll keep the little koala bear to ourselves. It's been a terrible mistake, Inspector. Dame Edna Everidge is a big British movie star. Megastar. Megastar. And like most Australian intellectuals, an outspoken friend of the left. In fact, she's as pink as they come. Pink? Oh, you're colourblind as well, are you? Actually, it's a gorgeous black and white number, designed by my son, Kenny. I'm often mistaken for Joan Collins in this outfit. But where are we staying tonight, Neville? Uh, I booked you into the uh, Hotel Sodom, Dame Edna. Sodom? Like in the Bible? Well, not exactly. Well, if Mrs. Allsop and I aren't in the presidential suite tonight, you can kiss promotion goodbye, Neville. Come on, girls, quick sticks. You've been in there, Madge. I hope you didn't sit on anything when you're in there, darling. You've only been out of hospital five minutes. Well, I only had that cosmetic surgery to please you, Edna. Well, you look like the bride of Frankenstein. Now stop grizzling and give Colin a few more leaves. Well, what about my beauty sleep? You could never sleep long enough for that, darling. Oh, by the way, Precious, did you pack my lovely frocks? Yes. Well, how many times have I told you? No wire hangers! Since I went to boarding school in England, ach, I've always loved rhododendrons and gladioli. They are the national flower of Australia, omnipotence. Ah. Well, in that case, I'll force myself to like them for a short time. After all, the Cretan Patterson paved the way for my coup d'etat, and this morning we are receiving. Ah, thank you. Is it the Marxist Mothers of Melbourne? It is omnipotence. Ah, good. The Australian ambassador. Dr. Sir Leslie Patterson. Oh, good day, Dick, old son. Greetings, my dear ambassador. <laughs> That's a very... Oh, sorry, sport. It's a very, very nice setup you got here. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you, sir. Hello, darling. <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> the spokesperson of the Possums for Peace, Dave Edna Everage.
New People's Republic of Abu Nivea salutes the peace-loving people of Australia, our allies and our friends. It brings honor to our land that this great nation in the southern hemisphere should send us today the cream of her wisdom and beauty. Uh, no worries, huh? On behalf of these peace-loving men and women of Australia, I would like to present you with this small, hairy token from down under. It's a real koala. I hope it's now strained. Look, a koala from Australia. Isn't that beautiful? Thank you. Thank you. I'm beginning to fall in love already with this seductive Australian animal. Ah, look at it. Never seen Listen, uh, what's the rules on this, all right? Liz and I... Couldn't they have sent you further than this, Liz? You've certainly let yourself go since I saw you last. Well, at least I don't look as I've got a poker up me ass. <laughs> Do you mean to say that you only get to sleep with your husband three times a year? Not unlike the Australian system, actually. I'll get a shot. Bien, bien, bien. I think I'm watching from your accent, actually. Isn't he gorgeous? Yes. This is nice. Oh, it's a boy, yes. He's got good karma. Yes. What a caring and sharing man Colonel Gadani is, isn't he, Neville? A striking contrast to some people I could mention. I reckon he's got the hots for you, Ed. <laughs> I don't think he's ever met a more sophisticated and cultured woman. Flattery will get you everywhere, Neville. Well, almost. <laughs> Do you know something? I'm going to make you one of my honorary possums. Here, wear this little possum badge. It's a prezi. Thank you, Dame Edna. I'll never take it off. What is it eating? It destroys every part it comes in contact with. It's horrible. It's like a little Vincent Price. Who's the expert on this stuff? There's only one man in the world, Madam President, who's isolated this bug. And he's under a blanket somewhere in Abu Nivea. Abu Nivea? Not that dump again. He was a Frenchman. He wrote a, wrote a couple of papers. Everyone laughed at him. His name, his name is right on the tip of my tongue. Herpes. Right. He did claim to have a vaccine, but in hell, in those days, there were no cases. Abu Nivea is a no-go area for Americans. We don't even have an embassy over there since the new regime took over. Well, there is that maverick, Les Patterson. That Lasho, don't speak to me. He has caused none of the trouble since he got there. I think I sent him there, for Christ's sake. Doesn't the CIA have an agent? As a matter of fact, we do have an operative on the spot. Then, for God's sakes, go get that French doctor out and bring him here fast. Frenchman's our only chance. If he's a genius, you all say he is, then I'll give him anything. I, I want herpes. I want herpes badly. Go on, Madge. Quick sticks. The glider tour will have started, woman. Aren't you interested in ethnic handicrafts? Yes, I am. Public industries. <laughs> This is nice. I'm sorry I'm late, sisters. You can blame Madge. She spent hours in the little girls' room this morning, didn't you, Madge? I think it might have been those exotic savouries. Oh, oh. these ancient crafts are fascinating, what did Edna. It's a pity you missed the date picking section. Oh, better late than never. Don't worry, oh, Edna. Course. I've got it all on video, including the books being stuffed. There's a wonderful old tribesman down there that can stuff three in a minute. Uh, Miss Earth. No doubt about it, Herpes, you are a genius. Oh. Who would ever suspect it? 
Ah, what a way to catch it, huh? Oh. A day is about 20 century technologies. So this is how they're made. How fascinating. Exciting product made from superlative raw material of Nevea. You like that? I hope some of these hygienic fixtures find their way into a nook of our hotel. The existing facilities are rather difficult in pantyhose with one foot on the door. I oh, fear huh? this luxury is low on my people list of priorities. This is for export only. Oh. Uh, I intend to program phase two tomorrow. No, that's too soon. I'm in charge here. Remember, Doctor? You were just a backroom boy. I provided you with all your research facilities, or have you forgotten? Now, very soon they will realize that they have an incurable epidemic on their hands. Or see it. Epidemic? I want this to be the greatest social disease of our epoch. I want a plague! I want my elf to make history! My cure will be the greatest miracle in medicine. Pasteur, Fleming, Herpes! The Nobel Prize for medicine is knocking on my backside! Sometimes, Charlie, I reckon you've gone off your rocker. <laughs> I can't seem to get the snot out of my nostril. Christ, man, that general was a defense whiz kid. And now he's just going to be a vegetable. A vegetable? More like a pizza. The FBI have already given his private life a complete checkout. A specific reference to sexual irregularity and amatory unorthodoxy. And guess what? Clean. Has a whistle. A healthy... You were almost hygienically sealed. Ed, if anything ever happened to you, I could never forgive myself. I was almost squirted by that washing up liquid. Yes. Ed. You know, all this modern technology reminds me of the clinic where my husband Norm had his prostate transplant. Your husband? You have a husband, Edna. I'm very sorry. Oh, don't be sorry for my invalid. We've done all we can for Norm, Richard. Richard? We even took him to America for a second opinion. The Americans cannot cure everything. Thank you. Thank you. Au revoir. Or a flower of the Australian desert. If only you would entrust your beauty secrets to some of those dowdy, unliberated women who shared my bedchamber. On the roster system, naturally. Uh, uh, gently, gently, gently. Only photos. Ah, yeah. Bye, yes. You know, Farouk. Dr. Herpes' obsession with the Nobel Prize is beginning to irritate me. 
I think he may have served his purpose. Just tell me when. When? Whack eye the diddle You read this, Neff? The swans have thrashed the magpies again. Looks like they're playing some really serious football in Sydney at last. Excuse me, Your Excellency. The Hassan family are back again. The uh, Hassan family? They're desperate to emigrate to Australia, aren't they, Neville? Who isn't? Who isn't? At least they get a decent feed and a good skin full of liquor. <laughs> you want to know something? I am hungry. Right now, I can eat a baby's bum through the bottom of a cane chair. Somehow, I can't get into this ethnic cuisine. It sounds to me like you need some good home cooking, Ambassador. I have some lamb in the freezer back in my apartment. Would you care to come in and share my loin? I'll see you later, Nev. Oh, uh, Neville, something I've been meaning to ask you, pal. Where were you posted before they bunged you in this joint? Uh, North Korea, Belgrade, a stint in East Berlin. Well, I reckon this would be promotion, eh, Nev? <laughs> see you later, son. How's that juicy loin of yours, Nance? It's sizzling, Sir Les, sizzling. I reckon I can spell it already. <laughs> mm, is that what you would call Australian style? Well, actually, Nance, it's what we call the uh, kangaroo position. Another drink, darling. Be my guest. <laughs> Come back soon and not too much of the booze. I might have a little surprise waiting for you back here, eh? <laughs> something long and lethal? Well, I've got something short and lethal for you. You're a dead diplomat, Patterson. I see. Shit, in. Cut the toilet talk, Les. You might as well know that I am Wisteria One, Australia's number one undercover agent for the CIA. This little glamour puss is Natasha Borovansky, born Odessa, trained assassin with a record of 17 hits. You mean she's a pop singer? You're the first one she's missed. I reckon you saved my life. Thanks, Edna. Well, you can thank me by doing me a very big favour, Liz. I don't think I'm up to it. <laughs> Couldn't we just be good friends? Not that, you filthy old swine. Oh, how I pity Lady Patterson. Unsavory things are happening in this town. Evil things. Poor little Dr. Herpes and your little lass Faronique have been arrested. It's up to you to spring them, Les. You mean single-handed? This could be your last chance to prove you're a man and not a slob. Washington needs that couple alive. I'll give it my best shot, Edna, but... If I swing it, where do we touch base? Well, me and the possums are booked on the first flight to New York. You'd better be there, Les. The future of the world's health depends on it. Try to get it right, Les. Speak when I'm sorry. That's the last stray sealer I'll ever.
if you like. I mean, who wouldn't be with women like you crawling out of the woodwork? I was a healthy, normal Australian kid. I just wanted to play football and windsurf. My mum and dad reckoned I had to be a real man. They forced me to go to operas and puppet shows night after night. Before I knew what hit me, I was assistant director of the art gallery. From there, it's only one small step to being a raving mattress muncher. This horrible country is getting to us all, Neville. You need a little... You need a little TLC. You need a week in a nice, clean health spa. You'd like it there, darling. You could meet a gorgeous dental nurse, too. You are missing women. Real women. Uh... Talking of missing things, I can't find my passport. I think it was in a purse I lost at the craft centre. Was it a clutch bag, or, or did it have a nice shoulder strap? The strap, it was uh, uh, white patent leather with a savage black motif. Oh, my darling, you remember. <laughs> oh, boys, if you find my purse, I might stretch a point and turn a blind eye to the little fancy dress party I stumbled in on. Thank you, Dame Edna. One word of advice, though, Inspector Farouk, and I mean this in a caring way. <laughs> Clean up your act. Oh. 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 I'm sorry if I disturbed you, the precious opal of the Australian desert, but I can't get you out of my mind. I must see you again. A tame koala animal is no substitute for a wild Australian woman. Oh, don't be so naughty, Richard. I'm a comparatively happily married woman. Shmadge, I'm on the phone. I've still got all my drives and juices, though. Funny enough, my gynaecologist looked up the other day and said I was still capable of having grandchildren. Edna. My frumpy wives have been at the hairdressers all day. It doesn't work. Oh. It doesn't work. Oh. They're only good for one thing. Shoplifting in the West End of London. Oh. I must have the original. Madam President, we just received this an hour ago. Then read it to me, Mr. Token. Aren't your balls too pink? You have seen what our bugs oh. can do on a small scale, and so have the Soviets. The first to pay gets the vaccine. How much? God damn it, how much? How much do they want, Mr. Token? Uh, one squillion dollars. A squillion? Mind you. Once we get the French doctor, we can tell him where to stick it. How close are we to that? It's in the pipeline, Madam President. To Nelly, to Nelly. What are you doing here in the middle of the night, Mr. Thong? Uh, 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 omnipotence. Uh, uh, uh. Do you think it could be the shampoo he uses? Oh. 
Zweckel Farouk's condition would be terminal in the United States or the Soviet Union. But here in the Bear, mm. we have an instant remedy for this little problem. Mm. Mr. Thong, you are about to witness a miracle in modern medicine. Excuse me, Farouk. Inspector mm. Farouk, in a few seconds, will stand before us, cured, clear of skin, and bright of eye, his old genial self. Uh. Clinic on the full box and on the rail. And here I am, headed for the guillotine. Or even worse, why did you have to give the dogs the whole box of tricks? Did you have to give them the antidote as well as the virus? What do you take me for, my petite Véronique? All Godowny has got in those opules is date juice. <laughs> I've still got the trump card in my sleeves. The antidote formula is our passport to freedom. Something is very, very wrong. I can't understand that the antidote is not taking. Yet when Herpes demonstrated it, it was hunky dory. Omnipotence. Yes. I, I feel funny. Uh, Farouk! Farouk! It's like. Camel piss. What? Or maybe date juice. I don't want to rock the boat, but I say you've been ripped off. Yeah, with this camel piss. Or date juice. I have been ripped off. Dr. Herpes has some explaining to do. Oh, oh, Edna, I got a cross line on your beauty aid. I get my hands on that slimy double-crossing little frog! It won't take long before he tells us where he's hidden our real antidote. Yes, but not until we finish with him first. Colonel. What do you mean? Ah, uh, Mr. Thong. What is that you've just taken out of your pants and are pointing at me? Oh, no, no, Neville, not twice in one night. You're lucky. I'm only going to tie you up. But the doctor won't get away so lightly. Hear that, Madge? It's Sybil Thong's boy. She should never have sent him to Geelong Grammar School. Be brave. We're French. It's me! It's me! Mon ami! Il a la clé! Hey, Charlie! You know that bug you're always on about, the disease? Well, it's an amazing coincidence, pal, but it's broken out in America. They need you. They're desperate for you. You could be another folk hero like George Washington or Johnny Carson. Johnny Carson? Leslie, I knew deep inside you'd come soon. Oh, 
We can't put genius in a cage, huh, Leslie? Soon, Veronique, we will be in America. Recognized by the president, there will be a tacky tape parade through the streets of New York and money. Oh, 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 think of the money! And nothing can go wrong now! Huh? <laughs> I thank you, please. One small injection, you'll be a new man. No, 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 See my sister. Now go, the two of you, while there is still time. You are young. You have your lives before you. I am an old man. And I am not well. You can say that again, Doc. Oh, Charles, what will you do? Just one minute, comrades. up with a holiday in Siberia, comrade. One to New York via Damascus. This is nice. New York's going to be nice. If I hear that word nice again, I'm going to puke. I'm hating this trip personally. This is the last package tour I ever take. I don't want to be a possum for peace. I never did. I hate peace. I just want to be a simple, well adjusted left wing Sydney lesbian. What's the next thing? Oh, let's go straight home to Australia. Nothing ever happens there. with you, Edna. You're like a cat on hot bricks. I think you're missing that Colonel Kadowney. Wherever you are, I'll find you. I might have known that drunken slob Les Patterson had let us all down. Would you ladies like a little refreshment before luncheon? <laughs> Liz! Edna, meet the only straight steward in the sky. We made it, didn't we, by the skin of our teeth? <laughs> Where is the doctor? Well, you win some, you lose some. He copped a very nasty dose. His history, we had to leave it behind. You've let us down again, haven't you, Les? You've let us down again! I almost wish that little Dr. Herpes had given you something yucky. Fair comment, Ed. As a matter of fact, I, he did give me something.
It's usually reserved for Paul Newman. Waiter, I hate this table. I don't like the view from here. The restaurant revolves, madam. In a couple of minutes, you'll see all of Manhattan. Excellent. My name is Henry, by the way, and I'll be looking after you tonight. That'll make a change. Make mine a Marlin steak a la Ronald Reagan, card of potatoes, and a Kennedy salad on the side. And, madam? Oh, the wife will have the Betty Ford platter. And, uh, hold the Nixon dressing. That's the name I booked on a phone. Good evening, sir. Ma'am? Nice little table for two for me and my research assistant, if you'd be so kind. Merci. Liz is the name. Henry, sir. Who's the Sheila I can hear singing? No one called Sheila here, sir. <gasps> oh, could that be her? I mean, the vocalist. Does the name Herpes mean anything to you? Sheila Herpes? I'm sorry, sir. Wait a minute. Our featured singer's name was something like that, but she changed it to Desiree. Why did she do that? I guess the management thought herpes wouldn't catch on. No worries. Wine is flowing. Take me where the night's so long. Take me now. I'm more than willing. It's so thrilling when you come so strong. Because you tell me Good evening, sir. May I help you? Table for Humphreys. Right this way. Table of five for Humphreys. Sorry, we're fully booked. And we don't have a tourist menu anyway. We're not tourists. We are Australians, aren't we, girls? Get me the manager, please. What's going on here? Dame Edna. What a great honor. We don't have a table, Henry. Who is she, for Christ's sake? Just the most famous and talented living British actress there is, that's all. <laughs> She's Dietrich Garland, Midlist, Streisand Streep, and Grace Jones rolled into one. Grace Jones? Show Dame Edna and party to table 10. Come on, girls. Thank you so much. <laughs> I've seen all the shows, oh, Damon. How do you do it? Oh, look at oh. My roommate simply adores you. <laughs> Who does your hair? You are, madam. Delightful. I have all your albums as well. Oh, Ladies. Ladies. You know, Damon, the rest of you. You're a real cult figure here. Thank you. I'm a cult figure. Of course you are. Come in, I live. Hey, waiter. Listen. Give that lady entertainer a drop of her favourite poison, will you, son? With this. Oh, man, isn't that music gorgeous? It's continental. Certainly makes a change from all that ethnic wailing in Abu Nivia. <laughs> we'll be able to see the orchestra soon when the restaurant turns around a bit further. Oh, Billy, isn't this romantic? Not too romantic, I hope, ladies. Dung beetles up the arse. <laughs> Hungry lobsters on the testicles. <laughs> Flambe of Patterson. <laughs> By cribes, I hope that really is Charlie's sister. It's a bit of a long shot. But the resemblance is spooky. Oh, look. Hang on. Who is? I'm afraid he's ratchet. He copped a very nasty dose of these, you know, these thingamies that's getting such a big press coverage these days. More to you. I knew he'd pick something up. He never used to wash his hands. What a lovely surprise, my pretty old. Ah, manners, manners. Ah, that's cute. Give me a habit, Santa, don't you walk away from here, millionaires. Ah. One of my wives find you a comfortable seat in the ladies. Send you something recently. Anything. Only a birthday present. This ancient Art Deco Arab necklace. We have the same birthday, you know. We are twins. Go on, you don't look a bit like him. 
You're beautiful. Oh. This Pattison is a cool customer. He's still got the time for the ladies. I never understood his appeal. <laughs> Do you mind if I, uh, I take a closer look at these beads? Not at all. Oh, be careful. Charles told me they could be worth a fortune. You little beauty. We got it. The anecdote. Les Patterson's causing an incident. So what's new? What's going Not this time, Patterson. Oh. Not this time. Oh! oh, oh. <laughs> Do something! Somebody get me the manager now. Sir, I'm terribly sorry. I didn't mean to look. Those buggers are molesting our Neville. He's not our Neville, Billy. Really. Far from it. Oh. Waiters, take care of that. Hey, where'd you spring from? What day, Pakistan? Police department. Oh. Yes, I'd like to shoot you someone uh, in the rye department. There's something terrible going on here. Oh, sir, sit down and just relax. Oh, Pakistan, you're going to be in trouble. Oh, Pakistan, Mark. Thank you. Thank you very much. I thought it was somebody's fault. It's all right. It's nothing. It's meant to do this. It's meant to do this, man. Where are we going? You folks are hungry and like seafood in a quiet atmosphere. <laughs> well, we're in your hands, John. We've got the appetite if you've got the credit card. <laughs> Fasten your seatbelts. This restaurant is going to sweep you off your feet. <laughs> Patterson's dead, taking the secret with him. But at least I have you, Edna, my love. Come with me. I cannot. In heaven's name, Richard, I cannot. Don't make me. It would never have worked. We come from different worlds, from different cultures. 
perhaps at another time, in another place, it might have been possible. But I can't let you go alone. Colin! Colin! This is goodbye. Goodbye for that. You know something strange, Edna? I'm glad that the cure for hell is lost. All over America, my sanitary agents are still at work. It is irrevocable! And the fate of the West is sealed! And I presume I'm General Evans, U.S. Intelligence. Good day, General. <laughs> boy, oh boy, am I pleased to see you, pal. You take an optic at this. Thank God. Well, now I suppose you could use a drink. Mine's a large one. So I see. But can you use a drink? Oh, Leslie. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> well, Liz. You got away with it this time, I have to admit. Fine. General? Come on, possums. Quick sticks. Let's all go somewhere and unwind. <laughs> the food here was never good. See, Edna. You saved my necklace. You saved my life. I reckon Les Patterson just saved the world. My God, I believe you have, Sir Les. But what does all this mean? It means that our children and our children's children can go to the bathroom again without fear. So that's the Nobel Prize for peace. It's gorgeous and so well deserved, Celeste. I want to thank you for coming to my little party on your way home. I've had the Oval Office totally redecorated just for you. Well, thanks a lot for the fabulous hospitality, Janie. You've been terrific. But I did what any Australian would do under the circs. I want you to meet my interior decorator, Leroy Rosenblatt. How are you? He's responsible for all of this. Isn't it fabulous? Leroy, I want you to talk to Celeste. I'll be back in just a moment. I'm going to check out the presidential bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't she divine? She is beautiful. She certainly upgraded this dump. No worries. Would you believe it, though? I do the whole shebang in pink, right? Pink here, pink there, nipple pink, off pink, on pink. I even color-coordinated the John. 
and wouldn't you know, just this morning when I get it all to match, some maintenance man comes and replaces the toilet seat. Changes the toilet seat? Would you believe it? Where's the president going? Take it easy. She, she went to powder her nose. Shit! Madam President! Don't sit on the can! Madam President! Don't sit on the can! Don't sit on the can! <laughs> I don't believe it! <laughs> no worries. Oh, 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 oh,